Women often present to my office with a complaint of hair loss. Hair loss can be driven by multiple physiologic factors, including circulation issues, thyroid dysfunction, hormonal dysfunction, and immune dysfunction to name a few. Today we'll dive into possible immune dysfunction drivers of hair loss. I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at optimal. Now, if you're a female suffering from hair loss, the immune system is one major possible area of the body that's contributing to your hair loss. So when we want to assess you for that and, and, and address the underlying causes, assessing the immune system is key. So if we start with hair loss, we have to say, well, what ways could the immune system go wrong or what things could be challenging the immune system resulting in hair loss? So one possible challenge to the immune system, there's three. Here's one, up here would be one, and down here would be one. So the three major potential drivers of the immune system resulting in hair loss are infection, autoimmunity, and or inflammation. And so when looking at hair loss and assessing the immune system's contribution to that hair loss, we have to look at these three things. And all three of these things are interconnected, meaning that infection could be driving inflammation, and inflammation could be suppressing the immune system in a way that makes you more susceptible to infection. Infection could be driving autoimmune processes, and autoimmune processes, again, could be suppressing the immune system's ability to deal with infection. And then inflammation and autoimmunity go hand in hand. Inflammation damages tissue. Enough tissue damage presented to the immune system could result in the immune system responding against self-tissue, that's autoimmunity. And then autoimmunity is self-tissue damage resulting in more presentation and the cycle goes round and round. So let's make a real case out of this. A female presents with hair loss. We work her up and she happens to have chronic infection with one of the very common chronic viral infections that is out in the world population. An example would be herpes simplex or Epstein-Barr or cytomegalovirus. Those viruses are also associated with driving autoimmune processes. So maybe this female has an autoimmune process on board as well. Call it Hashimoto's, call it Sjogren's, call it lupus, whatever you want to call it. And both chronic infection and chronic autoimmunity lead to chronic inflammation and you get these vicious cycles driving round and round where they're all perpetuating each other. Well, if the person happened to have Hashimoto's, that's autoimmunity against the thyroid. Thyroid sets the metabolic rate of every cell in the body, including hair, skin, and nails. So if you have an autoimmune attack on your thyroid, that could result in hair loss. If you, um, so if you can see here, there's multiple possible ways the immune system could be driven off kilter, which could result in hair loss. It, you don't have to have all three going on at the same time. I just wanted to draw for you how they're all interconnected and maybe driving each other. But infection could result in hair loss through these mechanisms, autoimmunity, and chronic inflammation. Another way chronic inflammation could drive hair loss is chronic inflammation can decrease receptor sensitivity to all hormones. So what if this, this female had a, a tilt towards an androgen dominance already and she had a, an overall receptor, um, decreased receptor sensitivity to hormones, then she's going to have decreased estrogen receptor sensitivity with a relative androgen dominance. Androgen dominance leads to hair loss in females and males. So lots of possible ways this could go. Just wanted to draw out a mechanism for you and say that, you know, it's common in, in mainstream, if you're losing hair, for people to jump right on thyroid, it may be thyroid, but it may not be. There's lots of other things it could be.